Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is part two of lesson one. Uh, I'm talking about the slope of a line in unit six here, uh, linear functions. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about the formula that we can use to calculate the slope of a line if we're given two points. Um, so the last problem, the last lecture, uh, we were given two points and we had to take them, plot them on the graph and then find out what the slope was by counting. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to show you a way that you can bypass that graphing step and just when given two points find the slope using the formula. Uh, so um, if we have uh, any line that passes through the points x1, y1 and x2, y2, so any two points, you can use the following formula to calculate the slope. Uh, m is slope. So m slope is equal to y2 minus y1. So this is still the rise. Remember the change in the y-axis? Uh, that is the rise. Divided by the second x point, subtract the first x point, x2 minus x1. That is delta x, the change in the x value, the run, um, given there. So this formula is something that we uh, is new, but we've done it by counting already. We've already counted the difference between y2 and y1, and we've counted the difference between x2 and x1, and we've put them in to get what our slope will end up being. Now we're just going to define each point one and two, and then plug it into our formula. Let's get to some examples. So. Without drawing a graph, determine the slope of a line that passes through the following points. We have A, 2, 5, and B is point 8, 7. So let's designate this point 1 and this point 2. Okay. Um, now we have them labeled, we can plug them into our formula. Slope is equal to y2. So the y point of point two, so that'd be seven, subtract y one, the y point of uh, the first point, that'd be five, divided by x two, so this is the second point, the x value, that's eight, uh, x one, the first point, the x value, that's two. Now we have seven minus five is two, eight minus two is six, We're gonna reduce that to a third, our slope is one third. Okay, um, if we were to plot those points on a line, we were to count them out, we would get some multiple of that. Uh, we would reduce it to a third, we would get the exact same answer. Um, let's do another problem. We have the point M, which is minus three, two, and N, which is five minus four. Okay, a slope, is equal to y2, so the second point, the y value, minus 4, minus y1, the first point, the y value, that's 2. Then we take the x value in the second point, that's 5, subtract the x value in the first point, that's minus 3, so we're subtracting minus 3. When we subtract a negative, that's like adding, remember? So we have minus 4 minus 2, that's minus 6, 5 plus 3 is 8, and then we can reduce this. So this would be negative 3 over 4 for our slope. We put a box around our answer. Okay, It is as easy as that. Plugging in our values into our formula, uh, the most important part is remembering which um, is the second point and which is the first point. It doesn't really matter which one you designate which. You'll get the same answer as long as you're consistent throughout. X1 and X2 um, are different points and that's the same as X, Y1 and X2, uh, Y1 and Y2, sorry. There are two now for you to try on your own. Um, so pause the video and give them a go. And when you're done, come on back and you can see if you got them right. Okay, let's do this. We have a point S which is six, zero and the point T which is four minus two. Uh, we got the y2 value, so m is equal to the y2 value, that's minus two, subtract the y1 value, which is zero. 
we take the x2 value, which is 4, and we subtract the x1 value, uh, which is 6. So minus 2 on the top and minus 2 on the bottom, that actually gets us 1 for our slope. So our slope for that, those two points, is 1. That easy. We have the next point, j, which is minus 12, 15, and k, which is minus 1, minus 7. That's a gross 7, but that's okay. Slope is equal to y2 minus 7 minus y1, which is 15. And then x2 is minus 1 minus a minus 12 for our x1 value. It's equal to, so this looks like minus 22 divided by minus 1 plus 12. That is 11. 22 divided by 11 is 2. So that's negative 2 for our slope. Easy as pi. Uh, just plugging in the values. Next thing we're going to talk about is discrete and continuous data. So discrete data is data that you cannot break down into smaller and smaller parts um, that has any meaning at all. For example, if you're going to the gym um, and you're paying by the month or by the visit, you can't pay for half a visit. You cannot pay for 0.43 of a visit. That just doesn't make sense. Um, it can only be broken down into whole numbers. That is something that discrete data uh, is. Um, continuous data can be broken down into smaller and smaller parts. Um, for example, if we're talking about the length of time that it would take um, to do something, um, you can have like continuous time. It might be one second, it might be 1.29 seconds, um, and that still has meaning. But 1.29 visits to the gym doesn't have meaning. Uh, so um, on the left, we have dog training costs. Um, so on the bottom, you can't see the title now, but now on the bottom is the number of training sessions. So you can't have half a training session. You can't have 0.98 of a training session. You only have one, two, three, four training sessions. So dog training costs is something that would be considered uh, discrete data because um, you can't have a part of a training session. Uh, the first one is $50 and then you add $30 after that for each of your um, training sessions. Uh, on the right, you can see the value of a laptop um, given the time in a year. See how it's continuous at time zero which is the bottom, it's most valuable uh, laptop at 1200. And as time goes on, that's continuous. The value will be able to go down in a continuous sense as well. Um, at one year, it is this value. At 1.27 years, it is this value. At 1.58 years, it is this value. Um, it is a continuous um, line. It doesn't matter what time you choose, you can tell when the what the value of the laptop is. Um, you can't do that with training sessions uh, for dogs. Some other examples um, of discrete and continuous data um, would be if you've got like a lemonade stand. So the amount of money that you would make um, it would be dependent on the number of cups of lemonade. But you can't sell like 0.43 cups of lemonade. That doesn't make sense. Continuous data um, might be the money that you spend with the liters of gas that you buy. You can buy one liter of gas or 1.72 liters of gas or 1.78 liters of gas. It is continuous and that all has meaning. Um, so let's go to Hannah's bicycle trip on the next page. This graph represents Hannah's bicycle trip. Um, so we have the time in hours, one, two, three, and we have the distance in kilometers that Hannah has traveled. Um, the first question wants to know, is this data continuous? Can we draw a line through it? Yes, this data is continuous because time is continuous. Yes, it is continuous because time is continuous. Each fraction of time has meaning. So we can draw a line there. Uh, what it wants to know now is the slope of that line. So we can take any two points on the line, subtract um, the y values and the x values, 
and find out what the slope is. So the slope is equal to the rise over run. So let's choose the last point and the first point. Uh, the last point, the y value is, is 72, and the first value is zero. I start at the point zero and they end at 72. As far as time goes, the x2 value is three, and the x1 value is zero. So that's 72 divided by three, which is 24. Now, the values, or uh, the units of these numbers, uh, that's 72 kilometers in three hours. So this is 24 kilometers per hour. Uh, that is the slope of the line. So the next question, what does that slope represent? That slope represents her speed. Represents her speed. If she was going faster, it would be a steeper line. It would be pointed up more. If she's going slower, it's going to be a flatter line. It's not going to be as steep. It's something we call um, shallow. Um, what we can do, because this data is continuous, we can uh, estimate how far she's driven at one hour, 45 minutes. So um, we can do it with the graph. So if we look at our graph, we go one hour, 45 minutes. That's one hour and three quarters. So a little bit closer to two. If we're gonna follow that up, um, I would say that that line, would cross the line at approximately, so using the graph, to find Hannah's distance after one hour and 45 minutes would be approximately uh, 42 kilometers as far as the where the line meets up on the graph. Um, we can also do that problem, find out what um, the distance is um, using math. Now, uh, this is a little bit complex because I'm not sure if you guys have done um, physics and science yet, but um, the speed of someone is equal to the distance divided by the time. And we know that because we actually just did that. Um, we were talking about Hannah's speed. Uh, she went 72 kilometers in three hours. So we found out what the speed was. Uh, if we rearrange this a little bit, we can find out what the distance is if we know the speed and we know the time, right? We can find out what distance is. Distance is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. So if I know those two things, I can find distance, which I do. I know the speed uh, earlier was 24 kilometers per hour, and the time is 1.75 hours, right? One and three quarters, one hour, 45 minutes. I get uh, 42 for this, and it's the distance, so that's 42 kilometers. So we verified using our graph and using math that after an hour and 45 minutes, Hannah's traveled 42 kilometers. Now, if you were to get 43 on the graph and 42 for the math, that's absolutely okay because the graph uh, will never be 100% uh, accurate. It will be fairly close, but there's always gonna be some guessing involved. Uh, the last question there, how long would it take for Hannah to drive 54 kilometers? So we're going, we can use the same formula, but this time we're looking for um, T. That is what we want to know. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. Whenever something's on the bottom, we can use, use our little trick from trigonometry unit and f switch them around. So time is equal to distance divided by speed. I know the distance is 54 kilometers given in the question, speed is 24. So that means the time that it would take uh, to drive 54 kilometers or ride 54 kilometers is 2.25 hours. So we could also say that's two hours, 15 minutes. Okay, so you can use the um, graphs to determine how far someone's gone. Um, you can use um, it to determine, you know, approximately how uh, long it's taken them to get to a distance. And you can use math, but you can also go on the graph and estimate it. If you were to go on the graph and estimate it, go 54 kilometers, um, that'd be somewhere between 60 and 48. You were to move that over, that should be just past two, about two and a quarter. So that answer does make a whole lot of sense, whether you're looking at the graph or using our um, mathy way to do it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know, but there's a um, exit slip and some do nows for you to try. Um, thanks very much and see you soon.